Okay, I'm sitting right now on the actual tree that Johnny Ringo's body was found on. Uh, I can't say he died here, and you'll find out why in just a minute from my friend Jerry Brewer. Jerry, come on over here. Have a seat. Howdy, Bill. Howdy. <laughs> now, you may recognize Jerry from one of his characters. Uh, he plays a lot of characters. One of them is Turco Paco. You'll meet Turco Paco one of these days. Sorry to interrupt the show but for just a second, but just in case any of you folks out there still don't know what a desert penguin is, look at his shirt. Now you know. Well, how do you speculate that he, that he died? You've told me before that you don't think it was suicide. Can you tell me exactly how you think he died? No, I actually don't think it was suicide. Uh, the last person uh, that uh, we can verify that actually saw Johnny Ringo alive was uh, Mr. Breckenridge. And he claims that he had seen Johnny out on the trail uh, on July the 11th. And, of course, he was found here dead on July the 13th in 1882. So uh, when the word got around that uh, Johnny had been um, killed course speculation it was was he murdered or or was it suicide and to this day we still don't have an answer uh, what is the theory you have of how he died and who did it well personally uh, I believe that buckskin Frank Leslie uh, uh, took Johnny Ringo's life um, there were several people candidates who would like to have seen John Ringo removed from this area. Uh, one was uh, Johnny Behind the Deuce, but it was said that he was in Artesia, New Mexico at the time of the uh, the shooting. Uh, and uh, Doc Holliday, of course, had had his run-ins with John Ringo. And um, it was said that he and Wyatt Earp, who was another suspect, uh, were up in uh, Colorado at the time and had a court appearance. And there is no way you could ride horse or buckboard or, or no train could get you down here and back in one day to appear in court. So uh, Frank Buckskin, Leslie, and he, uh, Johnny Ringo, had been partying uh, quite hardy for several days and uh, been quite drunk. And I think he and Johnny probably got into an argument and... Uh, my theory actually is that possibly Johnny was killed in another location shot with a rifle which made the flap of skin fall over onto the scalp which made it appear that he'd look like someone had tried to have scalped him and then maybe the body had been brought here and propped up right here on this this Kellogg or blackjack oak and um, he actually had the gun placed on his chest and was propped up to make it look like a suicide and of course, Billy Breckenridge, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, um, uh, Billy Claiborne, or Billy the Kid, our Billy the Kid here in Tombstone, uh, was a good friend of Johnny Ringo. And he supposedly knew that Frank had killed Johnny Ringo. And he went back to Tombstone and was telling everybody that Frank had killed Johnny. This gentleman next to me is Mr. Jerry Sanders. He's the gentleman who owns this property. Um, where Johnny Ringo's gravesite is. And um, how long has your family owned this uh, property? Well, let's see, they came here in the 1800s and so, and they settled. You know, they were Teamsters up in hauling timbers from the sawmill to Tombstone. Ringo was killed in 1882, and they were on their way to Tombstone with a load of timbers, and they met Buckskin Franks like Leslie about uh, where Gleason is, and he was looking for Ringo. He was actually looking for Ringo at the time they met him. So can you tell me and the viewers out there who killed Johnny Ringo? I don't know. My granddad always said Buckskin and Frank Leslie, but then everybody's got their opinion. And he said that uh, he could have uh, told all kinds of stories, but too many people was left alive, so he wasn't going to say nothing. And who killed Johnny Ringo? Uh, my personal feeling was Buckskin Frank Leslie, and I can back that up. Uh, Billy Brackenridge was the deputy marshal here in Tombstone. They were riding out to Gaileyville. Uh, Johnny had been in town several days drinking. Well, as he was going out, Breckenridge was coming in, and he saw and spoke to uh, Ringo. 
a few miles down the trail, he came across Buckskin Frank Leslie. Next time they found Ringo, he was dead. Now, there's an article in one of the Old West, True West magazines, and they said the pistol they took off of Ringo that he supposedly committed suicide with was a seven and a half inch barrel coat peacemaker. He didn't carry a seven and a half inch barrel coat. He carried the small four and five eighths barrel peacemakers, and they were ivory handled peacemakers. This one wasn't. So I do feel, and uh, Buckskin Frank was noted for carrying a long barreled pistol when he worked over at the Oriental here to buffalo people with, and that means hit them in the head when they got out Rudy, uh, rowdy over at the Oriental. In fact, he even, uh, and I've seen a copy of the letter that he sent to Colt, special ordering a 12 and a half inch barrel, but the one they found on uh, Ringo was seven and a half inch. We're still on the streets of Tombstone, and this gentleman's name is Johnny Bones. Who killed Johnny Ringo? No one. Well, I think it was Frank. Frank Leslie. Buckskin Frank. That's who I think it was. Another vote for Frank Buckskin Leslie. <laughs> or is it Buckskin Frank Leslie? I don't yeah, know. I never get it right. <laughs> Mike. 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 Benjamin. I'm Teresa. Teresa. Mike and Teresa. Who killed Johnny Ringo? Buckskin Frank Leslie. I think so. Frank Leslie. I think. There is no way you're going to make me ever believe Bucks, er, Johnny Ringo committed suicide. If I, was gonna, if I was to kill myself, I wouldn't pull my pants down around my feet first. To, you want to be seen like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, uh, who shot Johnny Ringo? Good question. I think that was Buckskin Frank Leslie snuck in on him. Actually, a lot of people do, too. That's the same thing we always say. Yep. Buckskin or someone. We don't know for yep. sure, but the story is Buckskin. Johnny Ringo <laughs> pulled his own gun, shot himself in the head, then reloaded, stuck it back in his belt, and died after shooting himself. All of his cartridge belts were loaded and all of his guns fully loaded. It was a suicide. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and there you have it, Ike. As you just heard and saw, uh, not everybody thinks Johnny Ringo killed himself. In fact, most of them seem to believe that uh, Buckskin Frank Leslie did him in. Well, who knows? We'll be arguing about that for another 125 years. Well, I gotta get going. It's bad enough I gotta go look for that crazy bandito Turco Paco who's out there somewhere. Heard he's in the Dragoons again. Now I gotta worry about it pack of wild renegades running all over the territory. I tell you, it ain't easy being a U.S. Marshal.